Okay, welcome to Through the Bible, Brother David, again, my friends. We are glad you would join us. We do appreciate each one of you who shares with us in these. And, I, and like I said before, I, I try to make a point every week to pray for the viewers and subscribers. And I do that very thing. And the Lord gave us a new subscriber this week, uh, number 75. I don't know who it is, but I appreciate that. But my friends, let's move on here uh, in, in chapter 12. We're talking about the law and how it was given and when it was given and all the circumstances around it. Uh, it. It couldn't even touch the mountain. Verse 20, For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Or about that. Even a, even a cow or a or a, or a goat that touched that mountain was to be killed because God Almighty was given the law to Moses. That's why this situation was so so uh, extre extreme like it was and so uh, serious. Uh, it was a very serious thing. You see, our sin is a very terrible and serious thing. The sins of mankind. God gave the law we we're told as a schoolmaster to bring us into grace but the law as Paul described in the book of Romans shows us without any question without any doubt our sinful human nature and our sinful wrongdoings now, because uh, when it's written down as the law is and you go back and you examine the Old Testament law uh, and, and then you read the New Testament when Christ gives very clear interpretations of it, how it's not just the deed, but also the thought and intent of the heart that we may have. And, uh, and so uh, and we'd have to say, well, if that's the case, then we've all sinned. So it is with the law. And you, deal, you, you think you're going to get saved by doing the law? You can't. No one can. No one has ever kept the law save for Jesus Christ. He's the only one to ever keep the law. And, uh, and that's why we call him our Lord and Savior. He did that which we could not do. He prayed the, paid the price that we could not pay. And we could, we could never, never uh, have paid for our sin debt. Never. But Jesus Christ did. Uh, it wouldn't have done you and I any good at all to have hung upon the cross. We would just have died and went to hell. Uh, but Jesus Christ, while he was there, uh, is the innocent and is the Lamb of God. He paid the sin debt for us. And uh, uh, he uh, did that which we could never do. Never, never. And But if you want to deal with the law, right here is the type of a, of a situation you'll be dealing with, something that's severe, something that's fearful, something that is, uh, uh, that will just, that will, you'd be, people can't even listen to. Uh, the people who heard said, please say no more, we can't take it. And uh, it's such a fearful thing. Moses said, I even shook. That's what Moses had to say about it. Uh, verse 21, so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was not a, a, a good thing around there. You see, sin, as God Almighty deals with sin, as God uh, shows his, his true thoughts about sin, what it really is, uh, it's a fearful thing. And the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And uh, and so when you when you when you think about uh, standing before God in your own behalf, that's what you'd be doing. You'd be standing before the Lord and before the law of God without an advocate, without an intercessor. You'd be standing there just like Moses and the children of Israel were standing before a holy God as He gave the law. And that's what they saw and perceived about it. And they said, please, uh, don't stop. Stop. That's what they were asking them to do. 
most I can see in the few and, and quake. Well, my dear friends, that's a fearful thing. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And uh, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, you, you just think it's fine. Uh, people used the term hell very loosely in our days. And people uh, talk about hell like it's one big uh, vacation spot where sinners go to to have a good time. There won't be no good time in hell. We read about it. Jesus Christ told us about that in, in the book of Luke. He said, The fire is not quenched, the worm dieth not. And uh, the rich man cried out for just a drop of water to be put to his tongue. He said, Please, let me tell my brethren not to come to this terrible place. Please send somebody to tell them. Well, my dear friends, uh, uh, that's that's what you be dealing with if you die without knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, and don't take these words lightly that you read here. Don't think that you you'll stand through them. You won't. Uh, don't think that you're tough enough to go there. You're not. Uh, no no person is. Going be, there's a lot of people in hell. A lot more people going there. A lot more people going to die. Uh, and uh, and, and, and go to a devil's hell uh, so fierce and so terrible as it will be. And when they stand before a holy God who judges them according to righteousness, uh, they're not going to escape. They'll be found guilty. And uh, they'll be sent, sent back into hell forever and forever. And, uh, but that's not the side of God that we have come to. Uh, the side of God that we have come to it's much more different than that. I'm glad that God is more than a God of wrath. Our God is very amazing. I don't think anybody has ever been able to completely describe God. I don't think so at all. And uh, when I think about God, yes, he's a God of wrath. He's a God of fire. He's a God of judgment. Yet he's also just as much or more so. And I think we could say more so a God of love and a God of mercy. The Bible said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The rest of the world did not. They died under his judgment. Uh, but I think that all of them could have gotten upon that ark if they had been willing to. And they could have, they could have received mercy just like Noah and his family received grace and mercy. And so, uh, uh, so when we think of God, don't get the idea that he's just one or the other some people get the idea well he's just a, a sweet loving god who never does anything wrong uh well he never does anything wrong that's for sure uh, but he's not just somebody a, a god who lays around smiles at everything that everybody does that is not the case at all of our god uh he judges wrath he chastens uh his people he deals with sin uh, he executed uh, with fire and judgment he burned up Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone so uh, so always remember that the Lord God uh, uh, has multiple characteristics that we see in him uh, but we who believe we who like Noah okay uh, we who, like Noah, have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know what? We have not come unto Mount Sinai, but we have come unto Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. That's where we have come to. We have come to the place where we're going to find, where we can find mercy uh, unto the city of the living God. What about that? Unto the heavenly Jerusalem. Wonderful. That's what we're talking about to an innumerable company of angels. This is describing what we have come to. We who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what we have come to. We haven't come to law. We haven't come to his judgment. We have come to that which is much, much better, uh, that which is called the heavenly Jerusalem. And uh, John said he saw it coming down in the book of Revelation as a bride. Uh, ordained, uh, adorned for her husband. 
He was talking about that new heavenly Jerusalem. Also, we're coming to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. And uh, that general assembly is describing the church of the firstborn there. That's what we have come to. Uh, you know, the Bible says when a sinner believes, there's much rejoicing in the presence of the angels in heaven that the rejoicing is going on. I think all of heaven rejoices when somebody gets saved and calls upon the name of the Lord. And uh, they, they, there's rejoicing in heaven. We have come to that general assembly and the church of the firstborn. The firstborn is referring to Jesus Christ. A first one, the first fruits of them that rose from the dead, never to die again, was Jesus Christ. Others were raised up, but yet had to face death. And that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, never to face it again. And so we have come to the church as the assembly of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Now, my friends, here we go again. Uh, we read about a book and about names being written in the book of life. And, uh, and I firmly believe that, uh, that uh, the day that you accepted Christ, he wrote your name um, in that book of life. He wrote my name in that book. And it will be there forever and forever and not be blotted out. More than one book, by the way. I know some people tell me, well, he speaks about blotting the name out of the book uh, that's the general book of life that has everybody's name into it that will be blotted out but our names are written in the lamb's book of life so note the difference though okay and my friends if you've never called upon the lord jesus as your lord and savior i would certainly encourage you to do so today and to ask him to come into your heart and to save your soul uh, from the fire of hell and uh, that's that's the only reason you need to get saved is because you're lost. And ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, and you'll find He will do that. Amen.